Well, well, well. Now, this Star Girl episode was a good one. Uh, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to Little Bit Man Gang. You know what I got for y'all. Y'all see the title. This is a review for a Star Girl Season 2, Episode 9, called Summer School Chapter 9. Um, the plot, you know what I got to give you. I got to give you the plot before we talk about it. Uh, Pat is reminded of her painful memories from his past, Mike is forced to confront the guilt he feels for his role in Icicle's death. Courtney struggles to hold on to hope after Eclipso targets those around her. So, that last part, you know, when Courtney struggles with hope because Eclipso targeting everybody around her, that leads into the first part with the pack having painful memories and Mike and Barbara and all that. Um... Basically, we get like a, a little flat. We start off with a little flashback of this, uh, of this, of this guy named Bruce. He was the guy who basically found the Eclipso Diamond from the island and brought it back to the uh, mainland to the states. And we get we get Eclipso basically begging him to allow him to take control, allow him to be in the driver's seat, and he could kill whoever he need. He could the dude like I don't want to hurt people. I don't want people to. Get, I don't want people. I don't want to kill people. I don't want people to die. But he said, "You won't have to do anything. I would be doing. I want to be doing the killing. I just need your body to take control of. And if you do, I could give. I think he want like this. He want his this woman he's in love with back. And he could. He's a Christmas, so I could make that happen. Even though you don't deserve her. No, he even like tons of how he don't really deserve her. But he gonna make sure he would get her back if he just give him what he want. And that's his body to possess." And then you, then like I think the dude was going to kill himself to prevent Eclipso for uh, either kill himself or destroy the diamond. But he ripped Eclipso taunts him, saying that if you really wanted to, uh, wanted him, not he, if you really want to get rid of him, you would let you would let go of the diamond. And the dude realized he can't let go of the diamond because he's addicted to the power. And then you know you see the scene where he's taking over the dude's body. Um, this would lead this leads into the Pat side of the story, which we find out is the dude. Which we find out is one is part of his painful memories. Um, the where this episode, where the previous episode was like one was about Yolanda with Eclipso targeting Yolanda. Then the next one was about Rick being a target by Eclipso. Now it's time, and then he tried, you know, he tried to target Rick and Beth in the same episode, but Beth is still being the only one who's successful. Beth doesn't appear; she appears in this episode only via voice over the phone and talking to Courtney. But she doesn't appear in person. Um, no, neither Yolanda, Rick, no, neither Yolanda, Rick, or um, Beth appear in and appear physically in this episode. But uh, you found out that Rick from last episode it, it didn't go to court. Something happened where he was uh, where they said he's going to remain in jail. And Pat's like, "That's good. He is better off for him to remain in jail because he'll be safer that way from the cliff." So, but Courtney has her disagreements at this, you know, about whether or not that's the right move. And she basically tells Pat that her and Beth think they got a pl they they got somewhere of a plan to go out to a cliff. So that they going to go out to a cliff. So. But Pat is in disagreement because he doesn't want to go out to the crystal until they have the two. They have a surefire plan to fight Eclipso. And the Courtney is like, no, we all do respect Pat. I don't think we ever going to have a plan that's good enough for you. You know, have we ever had a plan that's been good that's been good enough to your liking to go out to a villain? We kind of just, we, we never do, and we but we always come out on top anyway. And Pat realized that Courtney is telling the truth. That even in the last season, they never really had a good enough plan to go out to the villain, but it somehow always worked. And that she's right at all as well to assume that no matter what plan they come up with, it was never going to be to his liking. Um, they, they were trying to prepare for the, uh, the, co the coming up bad weather, you know, for some reason it's, it's just bad weather coming, but we all know that guy that got something to do with clips. So, uh, Mike is basically uh, Mike eventually gets along by himself to where uh, Clips will start playing his mind games with the family. He starts off with Barbara, who uh, who who was like basically hearing strange noises and voices. That they, you know, it, one one coming from the shade, but. Uh, 
But she, uh, but on her way home in the rainstorm, she in her car, her car stops for for some reason. And she hear a voice, a familiar voice, and she turns to see in her back seat that a certain someone has we has came back from the dead. Um, uh, Courtney, uh, Pat, you know, starting to have these memories, you know, uh, what uh, these memories, these memories that ties into. The big secret that they've been keeping for Courtney and the friends, uh, and that's what the fla that's what the flashback takes place where we start seeing uh, the original uh, JSA uh, and the crossover the 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 first actual crossover of the uh, of the CW with uh, Jay Garrett from the Flash crossing over with the JSA, and you see that. Uh, I guess basically in this time and thanks to the crisis and this universe, he ended up being, even though he don't, he, he's not on a planet. He, he, he too got the ability to cross over into the other dimensions into other, uh, earths and stuff. And he actually part of the JSA on that earth. And, um, he, he, uh, argue, they basically argue about where, what to do. They had a funeral at, they had the funeral for, um, for uh, Doctor Midnight's uh, daughter, who's been killed by a clip show, and and they struggle to try to figure out who, what a clip show was and what to do about him, they end up seeing in the distance the shade, and uh, Pat, you know, Pat wanted to go get the others, but he was like, no, I think uh, uh, Starman said, I think if he really wanted to fight. He wanted to came in and brought. He wanted to came into the open and broad daylight. In front of everybody to fight. I think he just wants to talk, and he ends up talking with uh, he ends up talking with um, uh, Starman and telling him what Eclipso is, and basically like how he told everybody else in the present that Eclipso is basically true evil. Um, Eclipso starts his mind games, like I said, with Barbara, and then it transitions to Mike. Mike, in the in, you know, in his attempt to get warm, for some reason, it started getting cold in the house. He uh he hears a knock at the door, and he opens the door to see that it's um uh, I forgot the guy's name, but it's basically Icicle's um uh, uh, son, and he and he said you know he said he, he's like uh, he's like hey what are you doing he said you know I got caught in the storm I had nowhere to go and he tells him that you know he he'll go see Courtney in a minute but he he wants to talk to uh he wants to ch uh, chill with Mike for a minute and we starting to realize something's off here why 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 this boy wants to chill with Mike uh we get to we get to Pat we go back to uh Courtney she uh I think uh. I think I think it was a scene earlier that where Mike walked past Courtney. Courtney was that's the scene where Courtney was talking to Beth over the phone, and you heard Beth's voice. That was like basically the only th that was the only sign of Beth in the episode is just her voice over the phone. Um, Pat ends up uh, going into the basement and start having and start going through stuff, start having all these memories again, which is the memories of. The flashback with Jay Garrett and them, and we started to see a little. We started to get a little bit more clearer picture about how they took care of Eclipso, and uh, uh, Starman. That's what this is the scene where Starman explains everything, like I just said before about Eclipso, about what uh, Shay told him, and basically Shay told him that Eclipso was pure evil, and that the only way to uh, stop Eclipso is to kill the host that uh, they kill the host that's affected him, which is the Bruce guy from the uh, from the beginning of the episode. And they real uh, Pat is like, no, we're this, we're the JSA, JSA, uh, JSA. We don't kill people. We don't do that. You know, we don't take a person's life. You know, it's always another way. Like you always say, uh, Star Man, it's always another way. He's like, you're right. It, it is another way. We we won't even consider that. But this leads to another flashback to where. Uh, where the JSA, where Iron Man, and, uh, uh, Wildcat, Starman, and all of them, they have they come into the room with Stripesy, and Jay Garrett informs Stripesy that the reason why they down here is because they because with them with you know with uh, Doctor Midnight gone, you know to to help him and his wife grieve him to let him and his wife grieve over the loss of their daughter. Um, 
they basically uh, need Pat to be the uh, man to help break, to help uh, fill the void for for a vote. Because they're taking the vote to what they should do. And the vote is, should they should they go, should they kill the hoes or shouldn't they kill the hoes? And basically, Iron Man and Wildcat, they they basically inform that you you find out that Wild you find out that Crystal threatened Wildcats and Iron Man's family, and uh, even though, even with that, Jay Garrett is saying you know they just, we just, we formed this team for a reason. We don't kill, or, you know we don't do this and that and that. And, uh, so we they say they take it to a vote. Wildcat, Iron Man, both says yes. Pat says no. Um, Jay Garrett obviously says no, which leads to um, the deciding vote uh, to uh, Starman. And Starman, he's contemplating whether or not he, what he should do. And you know, you got Stripes. He th Stripes he jumping the gun. You know, he you know Pat jumped the gun, thinking that you know uh, that uh, Starman's already gonna say no. He's like, that's another no right there. So we, so no, we're not killing nobody. You know, you know, it's one of those scenes like, right, Starman, right? And Starman, like, he contemplated, but then he finally gives his answer to a shock and pat. His answer was yes, that he actually agrees with. He said because he reveals that he was also threatened by Eclipse so his family, and that they have to do what they got to do to protect them. And uh, he orders uh, Pat to get the car ready, but Pat doesn't want to because he said he like I said no, I don't want to. I said no, and but he he, te he tells him now, and what well, eventually Pat gets the car ready to go, uh, to go attack Eclipso and Bruce. So and there's so uh, uh, back in the present, uh, Mike is basically having a conversation with. With uh with Icicle's son, and he started to act weird. It's like he they start talking about how how much time he had with his real mom and all this type of stuff. Then he said, "But you took my you took my chance. You took my time away from uh, my dad when you hit him." And he realized, you know, Mike is like, "Oh crap!" You he realized that uh Mike he, Mike realized that uh. As Icicle son is there to get revenge, and he tried to apologize for what he did for killing his father. But he like you kill my father. You didn't kill him. He's with your mother right now. Which transitions back to Barbara. Icicle is basically frozen the area, and he's freezing Barbara. Barbara and you know taunting her, saying that you know I I was nothing but in love with you. We could have changed the world, but then he but Barbara. And her attempt to try to, you know, ignore it and try to get, uh, overcome it. She hears a familiar voice, and that's it's the shade. And he tells her that she gotta, uh, she gotta get uh, wake up, and because there's nothing wrong with her car, is is nothing happened to her car. It didn't stop. She just stopped it and turned it off on her own, thanks to Eclipso. Uh, it's all Eclipso's doing. And he tells her the uh, the, the way to get out of this. Uh, this uh hallucination is to start her car and he like barbara for the you know for the love of god just start your car and barbara this is and finally you know having both him and icicle and her uh in her ear she starts the car and everything you see the area that icicle had frozen all turns back into rain and realize she was never he was never really there and that you know uh say that I, I need emily he also says that and Barbara drives home. Mike real Mike realizes what uh what Icicle Sons there to do. He uh he starts like, you know, looking at him angrily walking towards him and he breathed ice ice went onto the fire, um, blowing it out, and then he he starts to attack uh Mike with his ice powers. He he ends up he killed a dog and he ends up like choking Mike. Uh, I guess like freezing his throat to make him choke. And he said, he said, first I'm going to kill you, then I'm going to kill your uh, your sister and Pat and your mom. The to take that you took from me is only right I take from you. And uh, Mike is sitting there basically gasping for air. And that's you know you see all you see is um this this light. You see no, you see Courtney coming down. Courtney coming down with the staff realized something was wrong. As you see, Courtney, uh, you see Courtney basically seeing Mike on the ground gathering. She put Mike's hand on the staff, which goes, and Mike comes out of his hallucination, and he goes back to normal. 
Courtney realizes that they're being attacked by the clip, so she goes to check on Pat, who's locked, who's downstairs, locked in the basement. And Pat is also, while remembering, uh, Crystal may makes a hallucinated version of Bruce come come up, and we go back to one last flat. Uh, 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 flashback. And I forgot in the one with the last one with Jay Garrett. He basically was saying that he didn't want to be a part of it or what they was about to do. He said, "Don't worry, Jay Garrett, you don't, and you won't be." Uh, because only the only people that goes is uh, Pat, Starman, Iron Man, and uh, Wildcat. Um, I think even uh, I think Wildcat was a dick too. Like he was, he basically was talking down to Pat, but uh, but uh. uh Jay basically was uh, putting uh, uh, Wildcat in his place. They go, to, they go, and d they do something very unspeakable. To which, uh, once it was done, uh, Starman admits to Pat that he was right and that they should, that the JSA should take a life, but it's too late. What's done is done, but he was right all along. Uh, this leads to um, Pat uh, looking at Starman's clothes and seeing blood on his hand. He tried to wash it. He tried to wash it off, but the hallucination of Bruce tells Pat that it'll never come up because all of the, all him and the JSA got blood on their hands, taunting him for what they have done. And um, he chose. He goes to shoot at Pat. Pat ducks and uh, ducks behind the, uh, the beam and lands on the ground. To which he's looking up at Bruce with the gun pointing to him. And the other members of the other uh, JSAA from the flashback comes to interview in Pat's basement. They tell him that y'all all damn. This is your. You, you did this to yourself. You damn yourselves to hell for what, for your actions. And he's get. Uh, he points the gun at Pat. Get ready to shoot. And Pat's like. Ugh. But then this is flash. This is a flash of light, and it's court. It's Courtney putting Pat's hand on the uh, on the staff, and Pat comes out of it, uh, which forces this forces uh, this forces uh, Pat to basically reveal the big secret that he's been keeping for Courtney. You know, the whole the whole secret that he told Barbara that uh, the, what he told Barbara that they promised they basically swore not to keep. They know they say, they said we swore no more secrets, but this is one they had to keep. It reveals the big secret what the flashbacks was hinting to. I won't tell you what it is, but it's basically the big. I will say basically the secret is it has something with it has something to do with Eclipso and how he was defeated. Um. But that was the big revelation when Courtney, this devastates Courtney to her core. And um, it met, it, uh, Courtney basically runs upstairs because she, you know, she asked in her scolding Pat, she, you know, she tells Pat, what, uh, what would you, what, what would mom think about this? You know, and Pat reluctantly reveals that her, her mom knows. Revealing that she was part of the uh, keeping the secret from her, and Courtney, this is what devast this this made the devastation worse. It was made Courtney run upstairs to a borrower just getting home, who's trying to explain what she just went through. But she comes to an angry, frustrated Courtney, who uh, who and she was telling Pat too that you know, have you told us this secret? She says, "Have you told us this secret? You know, this this is this secret is a part of the reason why uh, Crystal was able to basically devastate and de uh, devastate and destroy and cause this mayhem to to Beth, uh, Rick, and, and Yolanda." So, uh, in the ensuing argument, you hear, you know, in a fading, it was fading. Like they played a little in music, but it was like a fading argument. You hear. Uh, Courtney basically scolding her mother and uh, and Pat for keeping this uh, secret, and you know you hear Pat say, like, "Hold on, Courtney, hold on, this wasn't your mother's fault." And her mother trying to explain why they kept the secret from her, and uh, basically you see the last shot you see is uh is of uh, the little Eclipso kid, and he goes. <laughs> And the episode ends, and uh, he and I was like, that was he he changed tactics on them. He he knew the best way to separate 
and to get into the uh, to destroy the court, uh, Courtney and her family was to make them reveal what make them reveal the secret that Pat was keeping from her, knowing that that secret would devastate uh, Courtney because it would it w it was a secret that about the Jazz hey, hey, that she never knew. Um, this episode was good. This was a this was a perfect ten episode because this was a psychological episode, and it asked, this episode asked a good question. Even even if it's for a good reason, is it do are you as heroes like Green Lantern, the Flash, them as heroes, do so they take a life even if it's for the greater good? Do, do they take a life or do they always fight for the greater good and find a way to save a life? But yeah, that's it. That's all I got. This episode was a perfect ten out of ten. Big ups. Um, I suggest you go watch it. And if you enjoy this video, then hit that button right there in the upper right corner for all of my reviews. And if you enjoy this video so much, you want to support the channel, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button so you get notified. But hit that subscribe button. Become part of the fam, like and part of the fam, part of the tribe, like so many people have done already. And Hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. But don't go nowhere. I got one more review video. Just one more. That what if season finale. Peace.